on The Jump, Never we answer that. all manner of trivia. Welcome to The Jump. I'm Rachel Nichols alongside Finals MVP Paul Pierce. NBA champ Richard Jefferson, who right before the show came on, said that we were just all angry at him for how good he looks. So that's true. That's you can true. make Look at the Come judgment on. Come on. about whether that is in Where's fact my the close case. Up? Where do I get a close up? Any? You get no uh, close up on anything. Uh, we are socially distanced, in fact, here in our LA studio. Already. Later in the show, you are going to hear Christian James McCollum compare himself to a shark on the court. Okay. okay. RJ, do you want to tell us what kind of animal you are? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what do you got? Grizzly bear. Hmm. Grizzly bear. Grizzly there we bear. go. Okay. When yeah. I play. When I play. <laughs> now I'm te now I'm a teddy bear. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is so nice. <laughs> <laughs> also coming up in this show, the NBA examining the video of Kyrie Irving masked <laughs> at a family party <laughs> recently. Kyrie has missed the last three games due to, quote, personal reasons. <laughs> Stick around for the latest out of Brooklyn. <laughs> First, though. You know the old Dan Patrick line, you can't stop him, you can only hope to contain him. That was Dan Patrick. That's basically the NBA and coronavirus now. Until there's enough vaccine distribution in this country for players to take their turn being immunized, there is no stopping COVID, not outside a bubble, not this season. But the league absolutely has to try to contain the damage, both to player health and to the league itself, which is why the Board of Governors met this afternoon to go over new, tighter rules that the league has bargained with the Players Association. And they are strict. According to our Adrian Wojnarowski, when players are at home, they can only leave the house for practice, games, exercise outside, and essential activities like grocery shopping. On the road, they can no longer go to even a league-approved restaurant. Players, in fact, won't be allowed to leave the hotel at all, except for team activities. Now, up until today, players have been allowed to have one family member or, quote, close friend. Why are you saying it like that? Visit them <laughs> in their hotel room when they're on the road. That has been outlawed now, too. And for at least the next two weeks, the NBA is also cracking down on in-game activities. More mask wearing on the bench. No more post-game handshakes that include maskless talking or hugging. Woj also says they're telling teams that in-person team meetings can't be more than 10 minutes and everyone must wear a mask. The stricter rules are an attempt to beat back what just three weeks into the season has been a growing mushroom cloud of trouble. Five games have had to be postponed, including tonight's Celtics-Bulls matchup. The number of players in the NBA's health and safety protocols have ballooned from just 11 last Wednesday to 27 by the weekend and now 34. Some of those cases have come on the road, which presents an even bigger problem. It's not like a player who has been told to self-isolate for a week or two can just hop on the team plane. Instead, they find themselves basically locked into a hotel room where the organization figures out if there is a safe way to transport them home. Right now, as I speak, there are members of the Dallas Mavericks who for five days have been trapped in Denver, a 12 plus hour drive away from home. And if you look at this map, you can see they're not the only ones. Now, Seth Curry got lucky. He tested positive when the Sixers were in New York, so he only needed to drive like 90 miles down I-95. But you had members of the Bulls organization who were told to isolate for contact tracing when they were in Washington, D.C. That is an 11-hour drive from Chicago that they had to take via COVID-safe car service back to Chicago. Members of the Clippers organization were in Salt Lake City. The ones who were being held out for contact tracing took separate sprinter vans to, on the 10-hour ride back to L.A., then continued to isolate there. Miami was stuck up in Boston when they were hit with COVID <laughs> issues. They had to fly players out on three separate planes, dividing up the healthy players from the positive player from those who had just been isolated for contact tracing. Indeed, it's the contact tracing that has been the most disruptive to the season so far. For every one player who tests positive, there are usually multiple other players who have been around him in close enough contact. The NBA feels it also needs to isolate them to pre prevent a much more dangerous or larger scale spread. That's absolutely the smart thing to do, but it's also what's been wrecking havoc. Take the Wizards as an example. Just in the past few days, they have had to sit Bradley Beal down for about 48 hours after the Celtics' Jason Tatum tested positive. Beal and Tatum had been guarding each other for much of the game the teams had played the night before, then had a close, maskless conversation afterward. Beal ended up passing several COVID tests and was eventually allowed to return, piling the Wizards to what was a great upset win over the Suns last night. I mean, seriously, look at this reverse layup, guys. Bradley Beal! Oh, man. Okay. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. All right, Washington's yeah. win. Powered by him. Powered
powered by that should have been the kind of victory a team can really build on early in the season. Except when co Coach Scott Brooks woke up this morning, he was told that two more of his players had to enter the protocol, which means practice was canceled. Again, Brooks noted it has been like this for the entire past month. The Wizards have not held a single shoot around. They've had multiple practices canceled and a key player suffer a significant injury that could at least possibly be related to all the stopping and starting of physical activity these guys have had to do. It has been a mess. The new measures approved today won't be able to prevent all cases of spread. Players still have to play games with or against each other. And we can expect some players to push back on the limits to their outside of work lives, particularly some who have already had COVID and believe they're protected by antibodies. Even though, as Brian Winhorst and Zach Lowe reported today, the NBA has had some cases of reinfection among players. Ooh. Still, the hope is that by tightening at least some measures, the league keeps things from spiraling further. You can't stop it. You can only hope to contain it. Boy, I really can't wait until the day we can once again say that and have it only apply to basketball. But today, unfortunately, is not that day. All right, guys, th this is a lot, right? A lot yeah. that we've had to deal with. And I want to bring in our insider, Brian Winhorst, to talk a little bit about that. I mentioned the report story that you reported out with Zach Lowe. Players who previously tested positive for COVID are coming up with positive tests again. What are your sources saying, Brian? Yeah, this is uh, obviously concerning. Um, it's happened in the last uh, few days or week or so, two weeks, um, uh, uh, several players, uh, you know, and this is something that, you know, the CDC doesn't have a handle on yet. We really don't know how long immunity lasts. We don't know um, whether it has to do with viral load and things like that, that are all medical terms. Um, we also, you know, there's also players who have been testing positive since March, and that's been 10 months. And maybe if they tested positive in March or April, when the testing wasn't as developed and there were possibilities of false positives, that some players who may test positive again didn't really have it the first time. But this is something that the league believes has happened. They believe they've had several incidences of reinfection. And this is an education point for the league, Rachel. As you were mentioning, one of the things that has been happening, there's so many players, hundreds of players, I really do believe in talking to people that have had this virus over the last t seven to, to, to 10 months, believe that they have a level of immunity and they're operating like that away from the court. And that could be contributing to the rise in cases. So part of this reality is that they have to educate players and say, just because you've had it, doesn't mean you can act like you would in a normal time. How do you think everything that we just discussed, everything that the league has put out, they're going to now start doing is going to sit with teams and players and how effective do you think it's going to be? Well, being stuck in a home is going to be a big pushback because there are players who are routinely going out to dinner with one another, routinely spending time away from their homes. Uh, again, because so many of them believe they have antibodies and frankly, most of them probably do. Um, but the problem, Rachel, is not necessarily the, the infections, it's the contact tracing. It's when one player on a team becomes positive, it's that six or seven others have to be shut down and now you're yes. shut down for a week for that and you're missing all these games. Obviously they're worried about infections, but they're also trying to limit how many guys get affected so that maybe they can sur you know, survive, but they can keep playing through a positive test, you know, one on a team, as opposed to shutting down most of the roster. All right, I want to bring Richard and Paul back into the conversation. So given everything, Richard, I, I mean, you remember the first month or so of lockdown in most states around the U.S. Yeah. You were not supposed to go outside for anything, and that is basically except the grocery store. And that is basically what they are telling players the rest of the season is going to be like until they're vaccinated. How, how, do, what, how would you guys react to this if you were still playing today? Well, one, let me compliment the NBA first. Mm -hmm. The fact that they're not trying to rush to the front of the line to mm -hmm. get all of Absolutely. their players vaccinated, that's step one, because this is costing millions of dollars. They dedicated a ton of money to get all of the the um, stuff done in the bubble. So it's like, they're like, hey, no, it needs to be first for, uh, you know, for our first line workers. people, healthcare yeah. workers, those are the people. That being said, the contract tracing, I don't want to say it's too much, but there's no way it's like, well, you guarded him, so you need to go away because you're. they have testing. that. That's rare. I will say the Bradley Beal, Jason Tatum thing is rare. Yeah. They haven't done that yeah. as much. Yeah, but but that looks like where it's going. They're trying to like, okay, well, maybe if we put you away, then it's like, yo, everybody was guarding Jason Tatum, right? So it's like you have to only do it when someone tests positive. When you're trying to sit players down and trying to do this stuff, it's going to add more because now you're, I understand contact tracing, but you can't do it when you're playing games to this extent yeah it's kind of contradicting you yeah. know i go into a game and i'm playing them all game but 
I go on a protocol for talking to him after the game. And, and so, uh, but this is a big concern for me because I know people that's been affected by COVID-19 and, you know, as the cases grow, um, people are dying out here. So if yep. I'm a player, you know, this not only affects the player, but it affects, you know, family members if you're around them, kids, uh, people you're close to. And this is a real concern of mine. I think we really need to really take a step back as a lead and take this a little more serious. Because me personally, I know people have been affected yep. by COVID-19 and has lost their yep. lives. COVID-19. And, you know, the, as the number of cases continue to grow, uh, I'm not sh- even sure about even moving forward. I know there's a lot of money involved in the NBA, but yeah, but is it worth a person's life at the end of the day? Yeah, I mean, look, I think what you're seeing today, these new protocols, it is what you say, Paul. It is the NBA saying, all right, we got to take it more seriously, even though we have been we've got to tighten up i want to make a point about the contact tracing though richard i I think the beal tatum case is a bit of an outlier most of what we've seen with the contact tracing guys who have been out of games have been teammates right Mm -hmm. who have been in close proximity without a mask to a teammate who tests positive and basically what these new rules today are basically forbidding is any of that kind of contact yeah so that if in the future a guy tests positive for covid at least within the team functions and they can't help it if two players get together at someone's house to hang out they're telling guys not to do that but within the team they can say look one guy got it no one else has to sit because no one else was around him without a mask outside of the game itself and even on the benches they're telling guys to now wear masks yeah but but this is the issue with it we knew that this was going to happen Mm -hmm. so i just think that for us to be shocked that like oh "Oh, how are we gonna we need and i agree like we should have the the step back should have been before we took a step forward Mm -hmm. look at football look at baseball Look what's happening in college. We knew that this was going to be the case. So 72 games, that was that was kind of a stretch there, right? They wanted it's ambitious. to ambitious. It was ambitious. The second half of the schedule, kind yes, of. Yes, and that's why and that's that. why they did it. But ultimately, I think the best thing for this to continue is just to push through. Yes. We know that's the only way. It's going to get ugly. Teams are going to probably be should be second, might be seventh, the eighth team might be third. You don't you don't know. But you, if, if you're going to and the players are okay with their own personal safety and they are willing to set up and do this, I think you just continue to push forward with all the protocols and realizing that it might end up being a 50 game season. And I'm and I'm okay with it as long as the players are. Okay. Yeah, that's the question I have. Um, you know, how does it affect guys who are missing games? You know, like the Celtics have had three games postponed. Yep. Will they have a chance in the season to make up those games or not? Because if not, then you have a they number of teams to. not playing the same amount of games. Yeah. But it could come to that possibility. Then you cram it in games at the end of the year. You're playing back to back to back. You know, that's going to affect teams also. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I think competitive balance, right? You just have to say that's not a thing this yeah. year. Uh-huh. There will be unfair things for certain teams. And the biggest one, by the way, is a team I'm about to mention, the Toronto Raptors. Mm. They're not even playing at home, guys. They're playing in Tampa the entire season, right? Tampa is their home. Well, <laughs> your home was that line from Almost Famous. This uh, yeah. is your home. This is your home. Um, <laughs> do they get a tax break this year? I, yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Their resident is in Florida. They're making extra money. Uh, they lost their second straight game by one point last night, despite Pascal Siakam logging his first ever triple double. They are two and eight, mm-hmm. and and I. I don't think it's a stretch to say that they have been affected by the fact that they can't even live in their own houses. Uh, Paul, they have lost their last couple games extremely closely. Do you yeah. think the turnaround is going to come for the Raptors soon? Yes, I do think they'll get better. But do I think they're a playoff team? No, I do not. I mean, if you look at their games, like you said, they've lost the last two games by one. I think they've lost like five or six games with, within five points. And they've had leads, like mm-hmm. double digits leads in, in, in most of their games. Uh, it's just a tough situation you're asked. Uh, the Raptors to be in because like you said they're not at home you know not only did they lose Siakam they lost Gasol but they're in Tampa uh, uh, it's a lot of unfamiliarity with the area with the arena with not being around no your family. I mean, no I mean no, I know there's no, no fans no Paul like, you know, you're a creature of habit Paul. You, know, you know that drive to the arena that place where you get your food from no there's Paul so Paul we're professionals I know you were fortunate that you played in in Boston for 92 years but most NBA players <laughs> 
to go to different teams in different cities and How they have to make these adjustments. How many teams did you play for, Richard? All of them at this point in time. <laughs> play for everyone, some of them twice. Isn't that, I mean, the number is more than 10, right? Not, you know, who knows? <laughs> but my point is, is that players are creatures of habit. But your habit, if they were to get traded to the Tampa Bay whatever, then they would start the process of getting... <laughs> Tampa Bay whatever. But I'm just saying they would start the process of getting familiar with their city and what they need. And understand, too, we talk about the adjustment. These are the Toronto Raptors. They had to make a big adjustment every single time they would have to go to Canada. That's what they talk about with free agents in Toronto. Do you want to deal with customs, the tax bracket, all the different things? Well, the players are making more money being in Tampa. I know for guys like Kyle Lowry that's making $30 million, I bet you he has a pretty comfortable home in Tampa, right? I'm just saying, like, we can't sit here and make excuses. They're struggling. They're not playing well. They will play better. They will play better. But I can't give them this, oh, well, they're not, they're having to relocate. That's part of what we've always had to do as basketball players. Brian? Well, Kyle Lowry may be getting more money. But he doesn't, he doesn't get to play golf in Tampa the next two weeks. That's really going to be a blow. Ooh, that's right. Paul Can't leave his house. This. Paul referenced this. Out of the eight losses that the Raptors have, I think they've been ahead in six of the fourth quarters. Yeah. So the belief, though, is while they're two and eight, that they actually aren't as bad as that record. And that Siakam, who frankly was terrible the first two weeks of the season, he played much better on this road trip. And you mentioned the triple-double. So I think... I would not give up on them. They are in a hole, but I would not give up. And I also think they're a candidate to make a trade at some point in this season to upgrade their roster. Mm. Yeah, and, and the, the last thing I'll say is this. With COVID protocols and with all of this stuff, they'll have an opportunity to get back into it. There's going to be a team that's going to lose a couple of games. They just have less room for error now, but they will have an opportunity to get back, and I still think they're a playoff team. So much more to come in this season like this. So nothing that's happening right now we can say is going to be a trend because there are no trends right now. There just aren't. All right, guys. Brian, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Stay in your own home, apparently. That's all you're going to do from now on, <laughs> just like an NBA player. Coming up on this show, after Giannis's failed attempt to take a charge on Woo! Aaron Gordon, Woo! we are running back the best charges uh, gone wrong. Uh, uh, I'm not giving that a dunk on Giannis. In NBA what? history. If Steve says it is eight teams. Can you name them all? Go. Uh... Brooklyn now, then Milwaukee. Uh, <laughs> You're on Brooklyn then, now? No, I'm saying Brooklyn now. <laughs> they wear jersey. Oh, then right. it's then it's Milwaukee, San Antonio, Golden State, Dallas, Cleveland, Denver. Did I miss you? No, Utah. Utah's in there too. <laughs> wow. Utah's in there. Paul, <laughs> well, yours is easier. I'm for. I'm like Boston, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Washington, DC, Clips. Clippers. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, some I, of those teams. That's what I'm gonna say. Some of those teams wanted me back. I just didn't want to resign with them. Right? That's not a knock. They just were too far away from I didn't break up with, They didn't break up with me. I broke no, up with them. They, they didn't break up with Patience off the miss. LaMelo collecting it. Chucks it down the court to Gordon Hayward. Look at that arm. Look Ooh. at that. Richard, there's a lot of full court passes all in the range right now. We're seeing one every night. Ah, whatever. This is a good pass. And Gordon just being Gordon, he's just going to shoot it to get the young kid an assist. Look at these full court back. That means <laughs> the there's terrible defense. Bad, bad Nobody's defense. Getting back. Nobody's getting Get back. back on defense. You ain't seen one of these against the San Antonio Spurs, have you? <laughs> this was a staple of your Cavaliers teams, Richard. Yeah. Well, Kevin Love, that's yeah, why. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it wasn't well, like Wes, Braun. It wasn't, West, it wasn't Braun to Kevin Love. <laughs> it was a West Unsell he had. Yeah, look at that. Well, that's a great that was nice. pass. That's nice. That's nice. No, no hate. You think they practice that? No, no, no. Practice? No one can practice anymore. There's no practicing anything. They weren't practicing. Make Star Fox. It's been a frustrating stretch for the Kings. But last night, Darren Fox put Ooh. an exclamation mark Come on, on a home Ooh. win versus Come on. I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Sacramento Kings have the best starting lineup in the... No, I'm just kidding. No, they are... <laughs> what? No, I gave them a little heat because I said they didn't have a very good starting lineup. But the kid, Halliburton, is very, very good. And you should enjoy watching him. <laughs> but we just saw Fox on the high. I'm just saying their team. We're talking about their team. That's Who a great Who coaches dunk. that team, Richard? I don't Would know. Would that be Who your cares? old roommate? Yeah, some bum. Walton? Some bum. <laughs> the former Laker coach. Asking. The former Col Laker College coach. roommate. Yeah, the former Laker coach. <laughs> Miss layups. Grizzlies, Cavs. Grizz out and running. And Brandon Clark smashes home the alley-oop. Paul, how fun is this team going to be when they get healthy? Ooh, they're going to be really excited. I liked them last year. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, they're, they're, doing, they're dealing with some injuries. 
Uh, but this team is going to be fun. I didn't expect them to be winning this much or even playing at this high level mm-hmm. without John ja Moran. Mm-hmm. It's been so, on and off. There's been yeah, I mean, some rough nights. They've been still in every game. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. I mean. <laughs> we'll see. Long way to go. <laughs> Again, you don't know what's going to happen to every other team this Ooh, season. Uh-huh. So your stretch with injured players could turn out to be nothing compared to other teams. All right, make awareness. Suns whiz. Mentioned this game at the top of the show. Ball's going out. Mo Wagner checks it off Dario Saric, who's lying on the ground. Genius. Smart. Smart. I love the music in the background. It's always always a guy who's closest to the ball. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Who was it that threw the ball at somebody's head one time like that? Where it's just like, you're just being extra. I mean, this is pretty extra. (laughs) This whole clip. That's a play. That's a heads up play. Heads up play. No pun intended. Nothing dirty about that. Oh. Oh. This oh. is the proper way to get back at a player if you can. Yeah, that's why the ball. Throw the ball, ball like him. here. Ref can't call a tech with that. Yeah, take I'm that. I'm trying to pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not that's <laughs> incidental, right there. Yeah, incidental contact, man. There's Come nothing on. incidental, and I should not have to tell right two men that. Miss obstacles, Bucks Magic. Aaron Gordon driving in and packing it over Giannis, who was trying to this take it This can't count as a made dunk. Ah. Come on, it came out the rim. I mean, come on. I can't count that as being banged on. First of all, you know what I'm saying? if it come wasn't on. Aaron Gordon, then I might give him a pass. Oh, but I gotta go, uh, uh, what's the definition of a dunk? It has to go, it has to go through the clean. net clean. Yeah. And that was, it was a nice move. And if you caught the picture right there, it looked nice. The, uh, all it, it is the poster. You need the picture. The they send you the, the picture poster. of it right before. That's all that matters. Yeah, the poster, nice though. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. not considered a dunk. Yeah, okay. I'm not okay, you're right. NBA top 100 dunks. You're right. It's not going, if he would have made it. Okay, but the char- focus on the defensive end, the charge that Why? was not a charge. I mean, why? I'm just saying because now it's time to run it back, and we are counting down. Oh, there the we go. The top five charges gone wrong. Right, right. That's why Richard Jefferson oh, number right. five. Oh no! Oh, oh, who was that? Like Xavier Henry on Jeff. Oh, Witt. I remember Xavier Henry. How about that flashback? Ooh. Oh, nice. Ooh, is he a Kansas guy? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> Both Paul Kansas had to guys, second, by like, the way. Oh, and producer Danny says in my ear, Ooh, the We on. all know how to pronounce LeBron. See, that's Paul Millsap, oh, 2013. I charges, man. I, my guy, Paul, man. I didn't take a lot of charges. I did in college, but once you got to the league, everybody yeah, jumped from outside. No charges. Everybody <laughs> jumping from outside the lane. Like, come on. Oh, oh this no, was oh, this was bad. Right? Because oh. Ricky Rick- Davis on Steve Woo, Nash, <laughs> That's why Ricky is Ricky. <laughs> Ricky. Run, Ricky, run! <laughs> Ricky, 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 look at that. On, that one-legged bounce was crazy. Woo. Look what at him. What did he say after? I don't know. <laughs> we, don't, we don't use that language on TV. 2006, Kobe on Steve Nash. Nash again? Come yeah. on, Nash, stop. Nash, you know, what? he wasn't going to block it. Defense. Steve wasn't going to well, block yeah, it. Yeah, it wasn't known for his defense either. No. He's just saying he tried. Yeah, just, oh, Steve? You know this. Sometimes it's being in the wrong place at the wrong yeah. time. Well, any, anyone defending Ooh. Kobe Bryant? Oh, oh, this is, oh. 92, oh. the Lister Blister. Oh. Look at that. Remember, you could get away with all that. That wasn't no technical, no technical. Point, point at him, get back down. That was awesome. Today, that's he like a... He it like Dr. J, too. Woo. He was my favorite was dunker. Fast. Him and Dominique Ooh. were my two favorite dunkers Ooh. growing up. See, that's when the league was fun. You can get away with all this. I was, I was like counting down. I was like, five, four, three, two, one. That's when things were better. I didn't say it. Oh, my God. <laughs> body, body snatchers. Mm-hmm. There we go. I'm sure Rich had a few of those. Yeah. One, one or two. Or he dunked on somebody taking the Or charge. 12 over eight teams. Coming up next, Nick Center, Mitchell Robinson. Home game. And we were flying to L.A. Uh, after our home game. And we all got to the airport. And Steph and Draymond weren't on the plane at the, at the departure time. Called Steph to see what was going on. And Steph said, oh, my fault. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm with Drake and, and Draymond. We're at the arena still. We're, we for, we're sorry, we're late. And we had a we had a team rule at the time that you could bring a friend on the plane, you know, a couple times a year. And uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, Steph decided to use one of his slots for Drake. So <laughs> Drake got on the plane that night with Draymond and Steph, and I find all three of them uh, for being late. And and Drake paid his five hundred dollar fine. Uh, you can you can ask him that. True story. 
<laughs> Welcome back <laughs> to The Jump. First of all, shout out to Steve Kerr for the Breonna Taylor shirt. Very important to keep her name out there. And the funny story of him explaining why he was forced to find Drake, Steph, and Draymond $500 for being late to a team flight. So, Paul, this led us to ask, did the Celtics allow A-list guests on any yeah, team planes? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think Kevin would allow that. No, nah. okay. Kevin KG wasn't playing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, -uh. I can't. Right. Not one I can think of. I never. I never saw that. <laughs> I, I, and on the 19 teams that I played for, <laughs> the league, I, I never. I never saw that. By the time the show is over, Richard Bull have played for 42 NBA teams. Yes. Um, I guess, Fancy. you know, when you win three titles in five years, you can bring Drake on bring the team plane. That's all I'm saying. Steve's story, definitely real talk. So in honor of that, oh, yes, it's time. Let's play one of our favorite games. The ball deserves to go in the crowd after a bull move like that. I think it's bull I just thought it was uh, bull Don't give me that crap. Kersey, Jess Kersey, yeah. He was That's right. It's time for BS or Real Talk. The first one is from Sunday night when the Nuggets beat the Knicks by 25 in MSG. Jokic had 22, 10, and 5. <laughs> After the game, though, Knicks center Mitchell Robins Robinson said this about guarding Joker. It ain't really hard at all. You can guard anybody. It's, you know, it depends on how you play him. You know, I was, I was there on every move he did. He just made tough shots, I feel like. So it wasn't hard at all. Me, is that BS or real let, talk let, let, from hey, Mitchell listen, Robinson? Let me tell Mitchell Robinson, that's what great players do. They make bad shots. That's BS. Bull. <laughs> complete. I got a lot of respect for Mitchell Robinson saying this because you should show no fear. You should. But at the end of the day, let's be real. Like His numbers speak for himself, Jokic. Like That's what he is. But so it's BS. But I like it. You should let your teammates know there's no fear. Whoever I'm going to have to guard, I'm going to do a great there. job. If it's not hard, go out there and stop him. He had 20 and 10 that night. Yeah, that's the thing. You did a great job. You held him to 20, 10 and 5. You held him to under triple double, yeah, which he's triple, averaging. Which he's you know, averaging. Right, so like, right. by those, by those numbers. I believe 22 and 10. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, those yeah. are great. He held them to five less assists. I oh. did ask our researcher for the numbers one-on-one -on -one and, and sort of that thing. I don't know if we can throw that up there. So yeah, there 70 to percent. But so that's when defended by Robinson, Jokic scored 15 points, six and nine from the floor. Effective hey, field goal percentage. When you talk 72%. like that, you put pressure on yourself. You got to come back and lock that up next time. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's also easier to talk like that when you're in a different conference and you only could possibly see him one or two times a year. You don't really say that when you could possibly go against somebody in the playoffs, but. It's the Knicks. Why are he's we talking been, about? I, I will, he's been a great spot for their team. Great in this spot. Promising oh, yeah. season. I agree with you. I think it's nice to talk the talk, but then, yeah, people might. Okay. Um, let's move on to CJ McCollum, who we featured off the top of the show after that smooth clutch bucket. CJ finishing the game with 30 points, helped lead the Blazers back from a 17 point deficit last night. Now, after the game, CJ was asked why he, yes, likes to compare himself to a shark. Why is a shark the animal that you compare yourself to when you get going? Because I'm a killer. A killer. Figure out ways to eat. I've always figured out ways to eat. And uh, I think that's what best describes me. Sharks just go hunt. They don't worry about things. They never worry about how they're going to get their next meal. They don't worry about anything. And that's how I live my life. I am so into the give no whatever, CJ, we're getting this 100. year. 100. Right? I'll give him that. <laughs> I'll give him a Real 100. Talk? Give him that. Hey, Real listen, talk. The numbers speak this year. I'm giving it. I'm giving that to CJ. Christian, uh, what is it? Christian, Christian Johnson? James or Christian John? Christian, Christian James. James. <laughs> right. Christian James. Christian. I, I'm with you, Christian James. Like, <laughs> like I, I'm 100%. Because this is why. That's what a shark does. When a shark is a shark, they don't hunt in packs. They just kind of do what they do. Great white sharks, they're out there eating, sleeping, pooping. That's all they do, right? And so, like, look, when he gets going, when he gets going, the only thing he's saying is that, like, I don't care about anything else. I don't care about who's in front of me. I don't care about what play call the coach is making. When I got the ball, I'm looking to eat. And he was eating. I'm eating telling good. you, when early in the season, CJ answered a question with, 